Hey guys, hope you're having a great week. Uh, what we would like to do is we would like to uh, just share with you a couple announcements. Announcement number one um, is that we appreciate how each of you have tithed. Uh, tithing is one of the things that we as a church um, do that, that keeps the ministries of the church going forward. And so we are so very thankful the way in which you have tithe and continue to tithe. We ask that you please keep it up. We're going to be back to church just as quickly as we can, but uh, we're having to do, uh, do it in the right way. And so we are trying to do our best to follow all the guidelines that are coming out of the governor's office as well as coming out of our um, local uh, government offices. And so we wanted to share that with you. Um, we also wanted to share that uh, we have a possible target date for return, and that would be May the 31st, not this coming week on Sunday, but the next Sunday. Uh, that is our target. We do realize that that date can change. Uh, we understand that if uh, orders come out from the governor's office, then we will have to abide by that. But we're hoping that that is going to be a date that is going to be our target. And if it is, uh, as we shared with you last week, we're going to be having two services, one at 9 and one at 1030. And we're encouraging our senior adults to come to the one at nine. Now, we want you to come to the one that is, is best suited for you and your family. But the reason we recommend that is because it's easy to get into the fellowship hall. And we know that we can clean the fellowship hall better as far as disinfecting it. And so, but we do want each of you to choose which service that you would like to come to and you come to that and uh, we will make things work. We will make things work. We have a few specifics that we want to share with you tonight about what it's going to look like when church resumes. Number one, there will be music but no singing. Uh, this is coming from recommendations, and so we ask that you take that in. Uh, there will be no bulletins, uh, and also in the sanctuary, there will be no hymnals nor Bibles in the pews because of the COVID-19 virus. Also, though we have a new nursery, and it will be open for you to use, there will be no staffing of that nursery at this time due to the restrictions. Also then, uh, Sunday, uh, there will be no Sunday school and there will be no Wednesday night services at this time. Uh, what we are finding out about the virus is that when we give it seven days, uh, it, is, it is gone, and we're very thankful for that. But it also gives us time to clean and then disinfect. And so uh, there will be no Sunday school or Wednesday night services at this time, but on uh, Facebook and YouTube, we will continue uh, putting our Bible study as well as our From the Heart of Pastor Todd. So we, we want everybody to know that. At the beginning, there will be no offering plates passed. There will be offering places, there will be offering plates at the doors that we will be using as entrances and then at the doors that will be exits. And so we ask that everyone please uh, take notice of that. The goal for each of our worship services as we begin will be to hold each service to under 45 minutes. Now, the reason that we're wanting to hold them under 45 minutes is because that's part of the recommendations, but also so that we can have the two services, one at nine in the fellowship hall, one at 1030 in the sanctuary. 
And the reason we're having them at 9 and at 1030, because by the time service is over following the 9 o'clock service, it will give enough time for those that have attended the 9 o'clock service to be gone before those that are arriving for the 1030 service get here. And so we want you guys to understand that. That's why there is a large uh, gap between the service times. Also, we want to let everyone know that our local board will be stationed at each of the services. If you have needs or if you have um, questions about anything, if you have suggestions, uh, we ask that you please let our local board as well as myself know about those. We understand that this is an extremely unusual time. Uh, there has not been one like this probably in any of our histories at this time. Our goal is to get back to worshiping together as soon as possible and keeping everyone safe. We also know that there will be adjustments that will need to be made once we begin services again. We ask that you please be patient with us as we make these adjustments. And if you have suggestions, we ask that you please let one of our board members know or myself. These are a few. These are just a few of the specifics for when church resumes. We also want to let you know that next week in our time of recording, we will be recording a video specifically for letting you know what it will look like and the procedures for when you attend our first service. We hope that's on the 31st, but we'll see. But that is our goal. That is our goal. And as we conclude here this evening, we have a devotion that we would like to share with you. Again, it is from The Experience by Henry and Richard Blackaby. The title of this one is called Carrying Burdens. Galatians 6, verse 2. Carry each other's burdens. And in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. When someone we know is struggling under a heavy weight, we can do one of three things. We can pretend not to notice. We can criticize the person for being weak. Or we can offer to help carry the load. People carry all kinds of burdens. Some are piled on them by life circumstances. Maybe they're dealing with grief or an abusive parent or a broken home. Others have made foolish choices and now they struggle with the consequences such as pregnancy, addiction, and public embarrassment. You may think their burdens are none of your business. They have, the, they have their problems. You have yours. Are you tempted to look down your nose at them for getting themselves into such a mess? Paul says helping them is not only your business, it's your obligation. You can ease their load by showing love, acceptance, and encouragement rather than indifference or criticism. When you are a friend to those in need, you help ease the load they are carrying. There should be no room in the Christian's heart for selfishness when so many people need help with their burdens. If we are surrounded by hurting people, we are not if if we are surrounded by hurting people and we are not moved by compassion, the love of Christ is not in us. It's a great joy and an unparalleled privilege to get alongside someone who is heavy hearted and help them lift the burden. Ask God to lead you to a hurting person today 
And then watch to see how God wants you to help. As we close this evening, I would like to have a word of prayer with you as we sign off for tonight. Heavenly Father, we think about returning to church and our heart is just filled with joy. Lord, we can't wait to be able to be back in church worshiping together. Father, we also know that there are going to be people that will be nervous about doing that. People that have extenuating circumstances. Our senior adults. Those that are dealing with sickness. And so, Father, we ask that you would help our videos our recordings. We ask, Lord, that you would help them to be a special blessing. But Father, we also know that others are waiting for the day to come back together. Lord, we want to worship together, but we want to do it in a safe way. And so, Lord, we ask that you would be with us as we work toward resuming our church services. And Father, we ask that you would help all of our people to stay safe. We pray, Father, that you would help this coronavirus to be out of here. We pray, Lord, for your complete healing. And Lord, we give you the praise for how you are going to achieve that. And Lord, we pray that you would be with us during this time of heavy rains. Lord, we pray that you would keep everyone safe. And Father, we ask that you would help us to with expectancy in our heart, look to the day when we are back together in church, worshiping you together. Father, we pray for the safety of our people and all that they do. We pray for those that have been displaced by uh, shutdowns during this time of quarantine. And Father, we pray that you would be with our leaders in our land from the national levels to our state level, to our local level. And Father, we give you the praise for all that you're doing. Lord, be evident in all of the decisions made concerning the things concerning the virus. Give the church discernment and knowing when to continue to meet together. And Father, for all that you do for us, we are careful to give you the praise and you alone. For it's in Christ Jesus' name we come. Amen. Hope that each of you have a good evening and a good rest of this week. God bless.